This video revolves around the unique project that sparked my interest, designing a microfluidic business card. Stick around as I take you through the journey of how this idea came to be and the interesting challenges I faced along the way. So there I was, casually browsing the internet when I stumbled upon a fascinating concept, a business card made out of a printed circuit board. I came across this gem on Hackaday and was immediately fascinated. The idea of showcasing your electronic skills while promoting yourself or your business sounded pretty cool. I admit, I was even a tad jealous, wishing I had something equally unique. However, being not an electronics engineer, I felt creating a PCB business card might send the wrong message. Fast forward, and I found myself designing a more conventional business card, contemplating the main pillars of my consulting business. Microfluidics was a significant aspect, and suddenly, inspiration struck. Why not explore the realm of microfluidic business cards? A quick search revealed some cards as microfluidic devices, but nothing quite like a proper business card. Before diving into the project, let's take a moment to appreciate microfluidics. It involves handling minuscule volumes of liquid, often using channels as small as a human hair. We have probably interacted with microfluidic devices without realizing it. Think of inkshot printer cartridges. They produce tiny droplets with heat in order to print tiny dots on a paper. In biotechnology, microfluidics enable scalable, faster, precise, and cost-effective liquid handling, revolutionizing processes in analytics and beyond. Now let's set some ground rules for this microfluidic business card project. I can't spend too much time. It needs to be quick and dirty. I have client projects and other business to attend. It is only a hobby project. Resource efficiency is crucial. I need to repurpose old materials such as expired 3D printing resin and discarded plastic cups. I do not want to create photo masks and silicon wafers for a hobby project. The learning experience is the most important one. I need to discover, for instance, the limit of my affordable SLA printer in terms of resolution and material properties along with other challenges in liquid handling and whatever that will come up. I need to keep this in mind throughout the project. Again, I did not want to invest months and bunch of resources into perfection. In microfluidics, we handle liquids in very small volumes. For this, we need tiny empty spaces, such as channels and chambers, to fill with liquids. I thought that I should make those chambers in the form of text, QR code and logo then I can connect all of those letters and features with channels. That way, I can flush in the liquids to be able to call it microfluidic. Recall my design for a standard business card created using Inkscape, an open source vector graphics editor. The design was already in SVG format. Perfect for importing into FreeCAD, a 3D design application, also open source. After some tweaks to fix intersecting paths, the QR code imported seamlessly. An initial trial involved turning all text illustrations into pockets resulted in 3D printed cards. However, the printer's limitations surfaced when it came to tiny QR code squares and punctuation. So I had to make some features larger. I tried to print a simple 3D printed business card to test text readability. After a few trials and painting the text on 3D printed business card, I was able to see all features. 3D printed business card is easy, but nothing new. But this was only the first step toward the actual goal. Then I introduced the channels and connectors. Here the real issue surfaced. You see, text is not much microfluidic friendly. All the dead ends in letters are traps for air bubbles. There are ways to go around this issue with pumps, but if I can fix the issues now or later, then I should. Besides, QR code is also challenging in terms of liquid flow. Again here, we have some isolated and some connected squares. Some parts will have higher resistance than others. I was pretty sure that there would be many air bubbles. My gut feeling was telling me that perfecting this part would be too much work. But I could perhaps use some pump trickery and tapping to get reasonable results. Finally, the inlets and outlets were designed with lure type connectors, for which I had some blunt needles, which are typically used in microfluidics. In that way, I can easily screw tubings which can be connected to anything. 
With these designs, I have the choice of printing two halves separately and bond them, or I can print in a single piece. First approach is easy to get clean channels, but binding may clog those clean channels. The second approach is hard to clean, but does not require bonding. To flush liquids, I tried syringe pumps, but instead I ended up using syringes and my own hands, because of simplicity for this crude application. Also, I was able to make quick brutal purges by hand, which helped me a lot getting rid of air bubbles. Now that I have my device, I flushed through some dyed colored liquid. But first I tried to fill the whole cart with water. Idea here is that it would look nicer if all the air inside is replaced with water first. Then flushing with dye would make those channels slowly more visible. The reason for that is that water has a closer optical density compared to air to the 3D printed resin. Remember those dead ends in the corners of the letters? Here's Microfluidics 101. Liquids behave much more differently in smaller scales than in macro scale. Imagine a small tube with 1 to 2 milliliter liquid, or a bucket of water, or even a swimming pool. We can mix water easily by mixing with turbulent flow. In small scale, this is much harder. Liquid tends to flow in a so-called laminar flow, and it tends to take part of least resistance. Therefore, it ignores corners and dead ends. This is physics, and we have to live with that. But we can rely on another type of mixing, diffusion. It takes a little bit longer, but eventually the dye diffuses over a gradient, coloring also the dead ends. If they were also filled with liquid. And there it is. First microfluidic card, to my knowledge, as of December 2023. Yet I wasn't fully satisfied. It still looks kind of dull to me. See, since my childhood, I really liked glowing things in the dark. I had these toys and stickers which are phosphorescent. Once I turned off the lights, they glowed for a few hours. Fast forward 10-15 years, I find myself staining cells with fluorescent eyes to get beautiful pictures of them. Once again, I had shiny things glowing in the dark in my hands. So why was I not flushing fluorescent eyes again? I will not explain here the difference between phosphorescence and fluorescence, but due to technical limitations with my camera, I would not be able to capture fluorescence nicely. Also, the UV resin itself absorbs UV light quite strongly, leaving nothing for the dyes in the device. Here, I was left without pretty shiny fluorescent microfluidic business card. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Already having spent too much time on this project, of course, I still didn't give up, because I had another trick in my sleeves. During my research, I used for my experiments in microfluidics a material, a type of silicone, called PDMS. After designing and ordering my templates, I cured PDMS on silicone wafers, the ones that are used in electronics, and bonded on glass cover sleeves. PDMS is great for such applications because it has low absorption and autofluorescence. But typically I made small devices with submicron resolution. Perhaps going back to PDMS can solve all my problems. This was the first time I mixed stereolithography 3D printing with PDMS. So I went back and created molds out of my 3D models, which was quick because I had all the designs I needed to convert. After printing these, I mixed an old unused batch of PDMS and pulled on my molds after waiting 24 hours. Wait, what? What is this slimy goo? Why didn't it cure? Typically PDMS cures after an hour at 80 degrees Celsius on silicone wafers. What is wrong with this one? After a literature search, I found out that the photoactivator in the resins inhibit the catalyzer of the curing agent in the PDMS. So one needs to deactivate it fully. I blasted my prints with deep UV light and then tried again. And this time it worked like a charm. This new solution even fixed a few other issues automatically. See, PDMS is air permeable and with some pressure we can squeeze air pockets out of PDMS. Also, it is flexible and thinner, so I punctured holes, bonded two pieces together, inserted pins, and there I had my device. Next, I hooked up syringes with water, filled up my device, then switched to another syringe with fluorescent dyes in it. Then I slowly flushed this dye through the device. 
Oh, and I place the device on a UV light source to excite the dyes while I can record it. Now we can all enjoy the show. And that's it. I made the first microfluidic business card to my knowledge. I made even a fluorescence version out of it. I don't think this is going into mass production anytime soon. It is not easy to use or sustainable. So I will stick to paper and digital business card for now. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in my other projects, you can check out my blog.